Give it up for the hottest band in the land. Monkeys in G-Forces. Thank you. It is great to be here in Western. Eastern. Eastern. We're in Eastern. We're in East Side. Eastern. East Side. Eastern. We're here. It's great to be here in Eastern, Northwest Southfield. First song we'll be playing tonight is from our number one album, Throbbing Orangutans. The song is called Scuba Monkey. through Boy Scouts of America and it's designed for uh, youth ages 14 through 20 and it is a co-ed group it's a sister group to venturing uh, the number one opportunity is for leadership because the youth are the ones that run the program and plan all of the activities uh, there's opportunities for sailing adventures at Florida Sea Base um, there's a high adventure canoe base in Minnesota um, the youth have the opportunity to ride on Coast Guard boats. Uh, there's regattas all over the world and cruising the lakes. You call a group of Sea Scouts a ship, just like a Cub Scout pack is referred to as a pack and a Boy Scout troop a troop. Ventures are called a crew. Explorers are referred to as a post, so you would refer to Sea Scouts as a ship. A Sea Scout ship is first organized by, or first you have to find an organization willing to charter them. It has to be a nonprofit organization, and then you need five adults and five youth, and then you're ready to be registered as a unit. The youth run and operate the ship. It is completely their program. The adults are just there to make sure that they're following all of the safe guides to scouting, making sure the BSA policies are being observed. The Sea Scout ship meetings are held at any location that is agreed on by the unit and they are held on any night that is agreed on by the unit. Uh, a lot of ships will meet once a week, although if they were to meet every other week that's suitable. What happens at a ship meeting is that that's the opportunity for the youth to get together and vote on um, the officers and the program that they want to do, um, the events they go to. It's their time to plan their program year. Oh, some of the many events that you'll do is in sea scouting is, like I mentioned before, you can. Uh, catch a ride on a Coast Guard ship. You can go to regattas that are held all over the world and possibly qualify for the Coke Cup. Uh, there's cruising in the lakes. Uh, there's just a ton of opportunities. Rope. Rope is something that a cowboy uses. On a boat, we call it a line. Uh, there will be line in the riggings of a sailboat. Uh, you might find line tied to the anchor and you will use it for mooring your boat. Uh, a lot of people like to use fancy tying and get creative with tying knots with their line. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'd like to take this time to introduce you the band members. Over here playing keyboard, we have Peter. I am Fluffy Lizard on guitar. And over here, our brand new electric 
Judd player, Petey. <clears throat> All right, I'd like to take this, this time to dedicate this next song to our former electric jug player, Fireproof, when in one of our last concerts, his face got burnt off by the protagonist display because he filled his electric jug with water and drank it and fell over and his face melted off. This song is called Cabbage Water Puts Out Fire. Fire Chief Tim Franz. Hey, Meryl. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. What were um, some of the reasons that you joined the fire department? Um, some of my reasons for joining the fire department was primarily based around community service. Um, I think everybody should give back to their community in some way, and uh, being a volunteer fire firefighter is uh, one of my uh, means of giving back to the community. What are some of the fire safety um, equipment that you have? Um, from a fire safety standpoint, from a firefighter, uh, we have a, a whole ensemble of fire gear from including boots, pants, coat, uh, helmet, um, gloves, and even a, uh, an air respirator to uh, breathe fresh air when we go into a fire. When you're um, at a scene of a fire, do you usually uh, do it like the videos, like in movies, where you knock down the door with an axe? Uh, well, it all depends. If, uh, if we can't get into the building, if the doors are locked and we believe somebody's in the house, um, certainly we would knock down, the, knock down the door, and it could be involve an axe or whatever means possible that we have. I heard some of the equipment that you can use as uh, infrared. Yeah, exactly. We have some specialized cameras. Um, they're called thermal imaging cameras, and we can utilize that kind of technology to uh, search a house for people. And what it does is it differentiates between the heat of the smoke and the fire and picks up on uh, people's body heat. So we can actually almost like see in the dark with it. I also heard that you have this one um like a chainsaw, I believe, that cuts doors? Yeah, absolutely. We have a, a, a carbide tip chainsaw. It's a little bit different than your home chainsaw where you know, your, maybe your father cut wood um, you know, with a tree. Looks just like the same type of chainsaw, except for it has a, a special blade on it that's uh, carbide tip so that, yes, it'll cut through metal, wood, uh, even some cement if we need to. What are some of the safety precautions that you could tell um, other people when there's a fire? Well, obviously when there's a fire, um, the, the biggest safety precaution is not really a precaution, but you want to get everybody out of your house. You know, and, and that's the, the most important uh, outside, you know, is making sure all of your children, your adults, seniors, are all out of the building in the event of a fire. Valuables are important to, to people, and that's why you know, we have a fire department. So get your family out, call the fire department, let the fire department come in, do their job. And we would much rather be putting a fire out or rescuing somebody's valuables than, than a person. Um, do you um, go to classes and talk to children about uh, fire safety and smoke alarms and things you need to uh, know and understand? Um, yes, we do, every year. Every year we uh, take some time and go to our local elementary school and we talk to kindergartners through fifth grade about fire prevention, fire safety, stop, drop, and roll, uh, replacing your batteries and your smoke detectors, testing them. Um, in fact, even this year we did a uh, little specialized program where the fire department would actually uh, deliver pizzas to people's houses. Um, and. Uh, 
And if you could demonstrate to the fire department that you had a working smoke detector, we would buy your pizzas for that day. Wow. Well, um, do you have um, any kind of plans for the future of uh, Memphis? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, the fire department always has to have plans. We always have to be thinking ahead of what kind of buildings, houses, what changes are coming about in home housing building. Um, how do the fire department, how do we need to adjust? What kind of equipment do we need to get to better service the community? How can we put fires out more quickly? How can we save more lives? So that's, that's always uh, future planning. Do you have um, any goals to be a fire chief? Um, not at this time. We have an excellent fire chief, uh, Chief Robert Phillips. Um, he's been our chief for the last three years now and uh, he's been on the department for a little over 27 years. So, you know, he definitely has the experience that's needed for a fire chief, uh, has the qualifications, and is doing an outstanding job. So, maybe someday, but just not yet. How many fire trucks do you have? Uh, Memphis currently has two fire trucks. They're Class A rated uh, fire trucks, which are uh, the highest in their class for uh, fire capability. Well, our school's only rated to Class C. Well, you know, if we have to uh, have a standard, and uh, it's all dictated by the NF NFPA, National Fire Protection Association, and uh, they tell us what uh, kind of equipment we need, how do we maintain our equipment, and uh, what kind of equipment that we we actually use. So they're pretty strict about it, and you know, it's it's a good thing when you're when you're trying to save people's lives. What are uh, some of the plans that the little children would be able to do for uh, preventing uh, any confusion, for uh, protecting themselves from fire? Um, the most important is to establish uh, an escape plan, a family escape plan, so that everybody understands um, if you have your smoke detectors going off or if you have a fire in your house, what do you actually need to do? You know, foremost is get out. Once, uh, you know, everybody needs to know what is the best way, you know, especially a small child, what's the best way to get out of that child's room and to the closest door? Um, you know, typically, I know at our house, we always use one door for in and out, but that may not be the closest door, and what if the fire is in between you and that door? So you always have to have a planned route and maybe a, a, a secondary route, so in case you are um, between fire and, and the exit, so, you know, it's, learning how to get out and then once you're out is establishing a common spot um, so that everybody's going to the same spot when they get out of the house. You don't have uh, maybe the parents going out to the mailbox and the children going out to the, the back uh, backyard. So you, to avoid confusion, um, make sure mom and dad know all the kids are out, the kids know that mom and dad are out, everybody meets at the same spot. Well, I'd like to thank uh, the Memphis Fire Department and uh, Assistant Chief uh, Tim Franz for uh, letting me uh, interview him. And I'd like to uh, tell all you people at home, always check your stove for anything uh, that's flammable, like a ball. Because I remember once we had a ball in our stove and uh, shoot, that thing caught on fire pretty quick. Thank you. Thank the Eastern Northwest Southfield Towing Company for uh, bringing out their tractors and uh, helping us to, uh, move the stage and uh, set up tonight. And also for the hotel transportation. Those are some comfy hay bales. This next song we're going to play for you is called Threshing Brush Hog.
The Ford 8N tractor was a great tool for farmers. The 8N model was a great improvement over the 9N models and the 2N models. Some of the adjustments were the new 30 horsepower four cylinder engine, the four speed transmission, an improvement on the brakes with both pedals on the right, a new hydraulic touch control, and improved steering. But probably the most important improvement on this tractor was the four speed transmission, which made it more productive and more flexible. And since this tractor was such a great model and a great improvement, I'm gonna make this 8N tractor into the Pimp N tractor. Now you can't buy any really nice looking shiny rims for this thing. These are 30s. You gotta get them specially made. Always what you expect. Here we go, some custom 30s just for this big boy right here. I made it myself. Can't you tell? It's high quality right there. And in the front, hooked up with some nice 24s. I made these myself too. High quality. Now these rims are off the hook. You're never gonna find a tractor with these kind of rims on them in your life. I guarantee it. But it's gonna take more than just nice shiny rims to make this bad boy fly. We're gonna hook it up with some more trim. Check this trim out. Silver chrome. High quality. Custom for the tractor. You know, when you're in the car, you have a long drive. All you gotta do is turn your favorite song on and you're set. What about when you're in the field drawing? Or perhaps even brush on me. It's a boring job. We can hook you up with the sound system and everything. This is it right here. We're gonna mount it right here. And here you have it, the best gosh darn looking tractor you've ever seen in your life. You're never gonna find a tractor with custom rims like these. CD player, trim, top line speakers, it's got it all. This tractor was originally made for farming purposes, like plowing, brush hogging, even probably some mowing. But I turned this tractor into something, it's a collector's item now. Thanks for watching, and good night. I used to use it all the time for plowing and other stuff. Did I mention it's got four speed transmission? It's got four speed transmission. Four speed transmission. But one of the most important improvements on it was definitely, I forgot what it was. I'm gonna make this 8N tractor into Pimp N tractor. <laughs> Pimp N tractor, what a picture. Now these rims, they ride on 30s. They're big. They could add some sparks in here somehow, I don't know. Keep doing it. High quality. Can't beat it. Nothing can beat it. There it is. Riding on 30s. It won't stay. It won't stay on. I turn this tractor into something that you're not afraid to look at. I'm starting over again because that made no sense. I'm getting sick of hearing myself say that over and over and over again. Ow, now, brown cow. Ow, now, brown cow. Can't find any tractors with this kind of... <laughs> Turn over again. High quality. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry. That's all the songs we are playing tonight. We have jury duty in the morning. Remember, kids.
Stay in school. Brush your teeth. And eat your spinach! <coughs> Anywho, um, thank you for coming out tonight. And be sure to pick up our brand new album. It's in stores right now. It's called Flaming Banana. All right. I'm sorry about that last comment. Thank you.